you want me to zoom in and out? You know, you, get a, okay. get a good view. Make sure it's uh, centered on. Oh, there. it's on. Okay, it's, it's recording there. Yep, good to go. Oh, okay, first up is the doctor. stated to the fans and everyone in Gator Nation I'm sorry I promise you one thing a lot of good will come out of this you will never see any player play as hard as I will for the rest of the season you will never see any player push his teammates as hard as I will push them you will never see a team play as hard as the Gators will the rest of the season God bless this was Tim Tebow's speech after they lost to Ole Miss September 27, 2008 by 1 point, 31-30. They went on that year to win the national championship. Determination, relentlessness, and courage are just some of the characteristics of Tim Tebow, which makes him my role model, which is why I'm going to tell you about him today. Early in Tim Tebow's life, he ran into troubles, not necessarily that he would remember. His mother Pam was told to get an abortion due to the fact that she would probably not survive through his birth. So they thought about an abortion for a while and they put the trust in God's hands and went through with the birth. She survived the birth and so did he and they were both very healthy. They even started in a commercial for pro-life. More on Tim Tebow's family. His mother Pam and his father Rob gave birth to five children, Tim being the youngest. His mother homeschooled all five children and had a very strong view on Christian faith. Although born in the Philippines, Tim and his family moved back to Florida recently after their trip. They were in the Philippines due to an extended missionary trip where they were preaching the Bible. Living in Florida, they lived on a farm, and with four siblings, Tim off, and found himself out on the farm playing football, baseball, or working out with his siblings. Due to all his hard work, he found himself playing college football at the University of Florida, where he was a Gator. He was a three-year starter on the football team. He was a Heisman winner in 2007 as a sophomore with 23 rushing touchdowns, 32 passing touchdowns, and 138 total points. Like I said before, they won the national championship his junior year. After all his success in college, he went on to play in the NFL. He was drafted by Denver, first round overall, first round, the 11th pick overall in the 2010 draft. He led the Broncos to a playoff win. After a pretty well-known quarterback came into Denver, Peyton Manning, Tebow took his talents otherwhere and went to the Jets. The Jets fans seemed to really want to see Tebow on the field, but the coach couldn't pull the trigger even though Sanchez sucks. He was then released and picked up by the Patriots, and, well, it's a tough subject, but he's no longer there. He's currently a free agent. Although Tim isn't playing football right now, I'm sure he's still focusing on his other aspect of life, preaching the Bible. In Easter 2012, according to TMZ.com, 15,000 people showed up to watch him preach on Easter. He praises God after all of his accomplishments in football. And he often says that he knows God loves seeing him score touchdowns. Tim Tebow also has a foundation. It's a lot like the Make a Wish Foundation. According to TimTebow.com, their motive is bringing faith, hope, and love to those needing a brighter day to their darkest hours of need. What they do is usually Tim Tebow sends them out films and lets them record themselves on what they want, their disease, their dream and Tim Tebow usually goes, hangs out with them, invites them to games, things like that. The reason he's my role model is because he wears his religion on his sleeve and praises God for all his accomplishments. If anyone knows an NFL coach who would pick up Tim Tebow, please let him know he's in need of a job. Tim Tebow is my role model. Thank you.
when there's a space book underneath the person's name to put the subject. <coughs> so important. In today's society, it's nearly impossible to get through even one day without using a computer or smartphone. In an article called Why Everyone Should Learn Code on Slate.com, they state it very nicely by saying, we've grown so accustomed to technology that we hardly ever question how the machines and applications we use operate. For those of you who don't know how programming works, I'll give you a brief explanation. Computers are stupid. They do what they're told to do. And we can't write out what we want them to do in English because they won't understand it. So we have these programming languages that act like bridges so we can tell computers what to do. It's basically like step-by-step -step instructions telling them what to do. A lot of people see coding as two-dimensional and don't see it as important. But in reality, it utilizes a person's math, artistically, artistic, and most importantly, problem-solving skills. From the same article, Why Everyone Should Learn Code, it is stated that individuals equipped with the skills of programming and then take the creativity and make new games, <coughs> software, apps, and even start building companies. It gives you the power to make virtually anything out of nothing. And on top of that, people can interact with your creations online. In an article called Why Every Single One of You Should Learn a Little Code at VentureBeat.com, some interesting statistics came up about women and computer science. To my surprise, most pioneers for programming were women. In 1842, a lady named Ada Lovelace wrote the world's first machine algorithm. And in 1946, a team of six women programmed ENIAC, the world's first electronic computer. And in 1952, Grace Hopper created a language compiler, giving her the, giving her the nickname Mother of Cobalt. For whatever reason, women's involvement in programming has decreased a lot. Compare 1984, where 63% men versus 37% women were computer science graduates, to 2010 where 96% were men and only 4% were women. Today, more and more schools are integrating programming into their curriculum, even for kids as young as 12. And why shouldn't they? I know at my high school, they didn't offer any sort of programming classes, and I never wrote a line of code until my first computer science class, which was after I switched my major. We're forced to learn biology and we're forced to learn chemistry, but not how to code, even though it can help nearly anyone in any job field do their job better. Whether you buy into the idea of coding being important or not is up to you. But one thing I know is that technology is all around us, and most people would be lost without it. And programming is just the foundation of technology. And learning how to read and write code can give you a huge edge. All in all, I think that it's an extremely useful skill to learn and will one day be as foundational as any of the other major subjects taught in the curriculum today. Yeah, I can do it. 